Hey everybody, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. So you're probably looking at my hands and thinking, oh, he has a Nintendo Switch Lite and he's playing Mario Kart 8 on it. But I'm not. This is the Odroid Go Super and I'm actually streaming Wii U games through Steam Link, through Android on this device. Now, if that sounds complicated, it kind of is, but I want to walk you through that today. Long story short, a couple weeks ago, I saw a video from ETA Prime where he was running Android on an Odroid Go Super. And so I decided to try to install it myself and see what kind of things I could unlock using this new potential. And I gotta say, it's pretty exciting all the things I was able to unlock on this device. When it comes down to it, one of the things I was most excited about with this device is the fact that it's perfectly tailored for streaming games. And that's because it has a 16x9 display, which means that once you have the ability to stream games onto it, they're gonna look really great. And luckily, because this device supports 5 gigahertz internet, it runs very smooth. Now there are definitely some hiccups here and there, as you can see this screen will freeze every once in a while, but for the most part I would say about 95% of the time this is playing perfectly. So in today's video I'm going to show you how to install Android 11 through a firmware called Lineage OS. Now it's still very much in a beta phase right now, it's got a few bugs to it, but what I'm seeing right now has a lot of potential. Not only for running Android apps, as well as for game streaming, but also for emulation too. So without any further delay, let's jump into it. Okay, so to find Lineage OS, you're going to have to go to the Odroid forums. And I'll have a link for this down below in my video description. Now up front, I want to tell you there are some issues with this operating system. The first issue is that it's not able to resize your data partition. What that means is that you're stuck with basically 4 gigabytes to work with. No matter if you put a 256 gigabytes SD card into your device, you're only going to have 4 gigabytes to work with. Now sleep mode or suspend mode doesn't work on this either, so that means you have to power down and boot up your device every time you want to play it. And if you've ever had an Android device, you know it takes about 40-45 seconds to boot up the first time around. And then finally, there is no mouse mode available in this version of Lineage OS, which means you can't have a cursor to kind of move around and click on things. So either you have to figure out how to get by using just the D-pad, or you have to have an external mouse handy just for some specific actions, which I'll show you here in a minute. So to actually download the firmware, all you have to do is scroll down a couple posts and you'll see some big red lettering that says current etcher image download. So just go ahead and click on that, it'll take you to Google Drive, and then go ahead and download it, and then you're going to want to install it onto your SD card using a flasher tool. So for example, Win32 Disk Imager or Belena Etcher. I have a million videos where I show you how to flash an SD card, it's super simple. I would just download Belena Etcher and then pick this file and then it'll do the rest of the work for you. So once you've flashed your SD card, all you have to do then is just pop it into your device and then turn it on. And it's going to take you through all the typical menus that you would have when you're setting up a new phone or a new tablet, things like that. Real quick cat break here, you can see my cat chicken just really wanted to get in the video, so here she is here. Alright chicken, that's enough. So all you have to do is just keep going through these prompts, it's very very simple. This is probably the longest part of the whole process. It takes a while to figure out how to use your analog stick in order to navigate the menus and things like that. It just feels a little bit unintuitive, but that's just how it is, unfortunately. Okay, so once you've made it through all these menus, you're ready to go. It's going to ask you what kind of home launcher you want to use. I'm using ATV Launcher because that's what I used on the Retroid Pocket 2, but you can pick the other one too. I'm not really sure what that one is. So here's the main interface. It's very bare bones, but I kind of like that. First order of business is to go into the Google Play Store and download some apps. And this is where things start to get fun. Now because it's much easier to navigate with a mouse, I'm going to use this trackpad keyboard, and then I'm using a USB hub here, so I have my Wi-Fi adapter hooked up onto one, and then on the other one I have my keyboard adapter. So that allows me to use a mouse and a keyboard while I'm navigating the device while still maintaining my internet connection. This is one of the bad things about having only one OTG port on this device. So you can see here I'm just going through the app store, I'm picking games out, and I'm installing them. So for example, here's the RetroArch app, I'm just hitting the install button, and it's going to install into my device. Another handy thing to do while you have your mouse set up is you can go through and kind of clear out all of your alerts. And then you can even go into the security settings and turn off a lot of these alerts as well, because without having a mouse, you're not able to turn off these notifications that pop in from the top. And it can get pretty annoying, so make sure you use your mouse to clear all those out the first time around. Alright, so here's the interface here after I've installed some apps. And you know, even with only one gigabyte of RAM, everything's pretty zippy. Like, I'm actually pretty happy with how quick and responsive everything feels. Okay, so let's go through and start testing some apps together. Let's start with PS4 Remote Play. And as you can see here, it's just saying something went wrong, you're not able to connect. 
which is kind of a bummer because I think those games would look really nice on this device. So moving on, I actually tried Google Stadia next, and this one didn't work either. I was able to actually start up a game like Destiny 2 here, which is free to play, and it got to the point that it was checking my connection, and then it would just black out. So I think that one's not going to work. So moving on to the Xbox beta app here. If you didn't know, this is an app that you can use to actually connect to your home Wi-Fi if you have an Xbox One connected to it. So you can see me here, I'm going to set up remote play on this device. And here I have to use the mouse to actually click on it. This is one of those things where it's good to have a mouse handy. But you can see here I'm playing Castle Crashers HD and actually there's pretty much zero lag. Like it's playing really well. And this is across my house. Like my Xbox is in the entertainment center in our living room and everything's playing beautifully here on my desk. I'm not sure you're gonna wanna play like a Call of Duty match or anything else like that. But when you're playing a game like this, I think it's a perfect match. The only issue I ran into was I wasn't able to actually close out a game using this controller because there's no Xbox button mapped. So unfortunately that's one bad thing is you probably have to run over your TV and then close it out and then come back over to this. Okay, so next up is Moonlight Streaming. And this is kind of a wish and a prayer when it comes to my own gaming setup because I don't have an Nvidia GPU on my home PC. So because of that, I have to use a workaround. I have to use an app called Sunshine. And you can see here, I was able to at least recognize my PC, but I wasn't able to, in Sunshine, be able to set up the pairing with the pin. So unfortunately, I wasn't able to get this to work, but if you have an NVIDIA GPU and you have GeForce Now or anything else like that set up, you should be able to play Moonlight pretty well on this device. Now, luckily, one thing that works beautifully, regardless of whatever GPU you have, is Steam Link. So first things first, let me show you how to set up your controller. When you go into controller settings and you map your controller, one of the important things to do is to not use any of the buttons that don't exist. For example, when it asks you to click down on the left thumbstick button, don't push anything. Just use your mouse to go to skip. If you try to set it to a different button, it's going to mess everything up. So you can see here I'm just going through all the motions and then same thing here, I'm skipping that other thumbstick button. And that'll allow me to use my shoulder buttons and my triggers. And then you can set your D-pad. Everything will work just fine, but you just have to skip the ones that don't work. So for example, you can use a select, but then there's no Xbox button. So just go ahead and hit skip on this. And you're going to lose some functionality this way, but it makes sure that all of the really critical buttons are going to work perfectly. Unfortunately, those four function buttons on the bottom of this device aren't going to work in Steam Link. So just don't plan on using them. Okay, so once you have it set up, you can just go ahead and browse through all your games and you can just pick Steam PC games. And if you want to play them this way, it's a very easy way to do it. Now, some games are better with streaming than others, but in general, this is how you're going to set it up. So for example, here's Portal 2 and it's running relatively smoothly. And you know, playing this game on a five inch screen like this really doesn't feel like a compromise. When I was trying to play this game on a three and a half inch screen on an RG351P, it was really hard. I was kind of squinting, right? But with a five inch screen, everything just kind of makes sense. Now, my favorite thing by far about all of this setup is that you're able to run emulators through Steam Link. So if you set up an external app, like for example, Simu, which is a Wii U emulator, and you set it up in Steam, then you can go ahead and launch it through there. Now you have to use your PC to actually select the games in CMU, so you have to kind of have your computer nearby. But after that, once you've loaded the game up, it's going to run perfectly. It will allow you to map all of your buttons onto the controller, and then you're just good to go from there on. I think the Wii U is that perfect console to emulate, because everything runs in widescreen 16x9, and it runs up to 1080p if you use some upscaling. And if you have a computer that can do that kind of heavy lifting, you're going to have a really great experience. You can see here, Wind Waker just looks beautiful. This is the HD version, and I'm just so in love with playing this on my little device like this. And you saw it earlier, but Mario Kart 8 looks beautiful. There's a little bit of lag, and sometimes you get some freezing and stuff like that, but in general, it's just such a joy to play something like this. And sure, there are a few caveats, like you need to have a pretty decent computer to be able to play some of these games, but it's really fun to be able to unlock this potential and then have a handheld device that not only can do all this emulation, but you can also play these games at a really nice native resolution. And sure, it's ironic, you know, because the Switch can play a lot of these games, but at the same time, there's a lot of emulation things that you can do on this that you cannot do on a Switch. And this is half the price, even a third of the price of a Nintendo Switch. And a really cool thing is that any of these games that'll play in the CMU emulator, so for example, indie games like Shovel Knight, if they play in this Wii U emulator, they're going to play just fine on this device as well. And there are some genuine classics on the Wii U that I never really got to take advantage of because we didn't own one during its heyday. I think that Super Mario 3D World is a really fun game, and I think this version of Mario Tennis is one of my favorites as well. 
It's like this perfect match of like deep tennis gameplay and then just the regular chaos that comes from Mario Tennis too. And you're not just limited to Wii U games, so for example you can run Dolphin, which will play Wii and GameCube games too. Now same story here, you can launch it through Steam, and then you're going to have to use a mouse or your computer to kind of navigate and pick whatever games you want to play. But once you have it all set up and you've mapped your controllers, it's very, very easy. And really, you're only going to be limited by the speed of your computer, so however fast it can play these games is how fast it's going to show up on your device. There will definitely be hiccups, you know, it's not a perfect experience. But I found using a 5GHz Wi-Fi adapter, everything runs relatively smooth. I'd say every 5 or 10 minutes I would get a freeze that would last for maybe 5-10 seconds, and that's about it. I'm really tempted to play through this Paper Mario game on the GameCube again because this was one of my favorites from back in the day. And it's been about 15 years since I played it, so it seems like the right time to try it out. Okay, so in addition to game streaming, let's try out a couple Android games as well. Let's start with Sonic 1 Classic. Now this is actually the same game that I showed off the other day when you can actually run a port of it. This is actually just the mobile version of it. And the menus are obviously a little bit prettier looking than the other one, but the gameplay is the exact same, so it has that nice widescreen Sonic which I really have come to love. Now some games wouldn't work, so for example I tried to play Asphalt 8 because I thought it'd be cool to have a racing game on here, but I don't have enough storage on the device to be able to save this game. And so because of that I wasn't able to launch it. But you know other games like Stardew Valley, which don't have as much of a storage requirement, are going to play just fine. Now I've never played this game before, but you know if you're into like chopping down trees and building things or whatever happens in this game, this is a very easy one to play and luckily everything works really well on this controller. Okay, let's move on to RetroArch and some emulation. When you first start up RetroArch, it's going to download assets so that it looks a little bit better. But after that, you can go through and you can install whatever menu drivers you want. So for example, I like to use the XMB one, so it's just very easy to go into the settings, the menu driver, and change it out. Now unfortunately, one of the major flaws with RetroArch is I wasn't able to map all the buttons. If you go into the port 1 controls and you try to map the specific buttons to this device, It doesn't work, it doesn't recognize the buttons. And you can't really see it in the camera here because my camera was acting all weird or whatever, but I'm trying to push the button that corresponds to the button they want me to push, and it's not being recognized. So I think you have to go in and like manually map everything using key mapping, and I haven't done all that stuff yet, but for now you're not going to be able to map every controller perfectly. And moving games over so they're playable in RetroArch is kind of a pain in the butt. Let me explain it to you. So first things first, you can see on the left you have these four different small partitions. And that's all the space you have to work with. One of those partitions is called the boot partition. That's the only one that'll show up on a Windows PC. But unfortunately, the Android system doesn't recognize any of the files when they're stored in that boot partition. So what you have to do is you have to move the files over to your boot partition and then move them back over to your internal storage. I know that sounds pretty confusing, so let me walk you through what I did. So all I did is I went into my boot partition, and then I opened up a random folder, I just used the alarms folder, and then within there I put all of my games. And then on my device I went into the files app. And then within here I just went and I found the SD card partition, and then I found the alarm section, and then I picked these folders, and then I moved them over to the exact same alarm folders within the internal storage. So basically you're just transferring everything over. And sorry for the shaky picture right here, there was something going on with my autofocus. So then after that all I had to do was go into RetroArch and then navigate over to that storage folder and then into alarms and then you can see there I can find my games. So if I want to boot up an NES game all I have to do is go into that folder and then pick a game out. Let's start with Super Mario 3. So it's booting up fine, but as you can see, a lot of things are wrong. So for example, it has that on-screen overlay, which is easy to remove, and then the controls aren't working the way I would expect them to. The only controls that I could get to work were the analog stick, and then the A and B buttons. And the A and B buttons were transposed, so B was A and A was B. Which is kind of confusing when you're playing Mario 3 because you're used to pushing specific buttons. But overall, the screen looks good, I think there's a lot of potential here, it just needs a lot of tweaking. Luckily, other emulation apps work better, so for example the Drastic app on Android is way better than anything you can find on Emulec or any of the RG351 firmwares. Luckily, it's very easy to map your controls using this app. You just have to go in and just map everything. And once it's set up one time, it'll save it for every game afterwards. You also want to turn down your controller opacity so that way you don't see your on-screen display. 
But after you have those two things tweaked, everything runs really well. I'm actually playing this game in high resolution, so it's in double resolution, but it's running at about 100% speed the entire time. That's a really good sign if after just a couple hours of playing around with this, I'm able to get really great performance like this. Now to be fair, I did get a little bit of slowdown while I was playing Mario Kart DS, and again this is with that double resolution, so if I just turn down the resolution it'll be fine. And this is with a frame skip of 1, but it rarely actually dipped into using that frame skip. Unfortunately I wasn't able to try out the PSP emulator because I just didn't have space to put a PSP game onto my device, but I think once that SD card partition issue is fixed, it'll be a lot easier to test out those games. For now I'm just really happy with the potential that I'm seeing with the Nintendo DS. Okay, so let's sum up my first impressions of using Android on Odrego Super. I think in general there are some true gems that you can play on this device. So just to start, the Xbox app actually works really well, so if you have a large Xbox library, you'll be able to play your Xbox games on this device. Drastic works really well as a Nintendo DS emulator. Now the Google Stadia app didn't actually work, but I think that if you use Steam Link and then opened up a browser and played Stadia through that, it might work. Now I think Steam Link is the golden nugget out of all of this, because it allows you to play a ton of PC games, and then you can stream all of your emulators as well. When it comes down to it, if you have a PC, either through Steam Link or Moonlight, you're going to have a whole world opened up to you for this Odroigo Super, thanks to this Android operating system. I think that RetroArch still needs some fundamental work, but at the end of the day, I would just keep two SD cards handy. One with Emulek or Retro Arena that allow you to play a bunch of emulation, and then this one for all your streaming needs. And PSP, we're not really sure about yet. We don't have the space to actually try out any PSP games, but I'm hoping they're going to play pretty well. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful for you, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.